What's your favorite fish to catch? I've been asked this question by friends, family, even my Uber driver has asked me this, and I'll typically respond with something like, whatever's biting. But if someone presses the question, I'll respond with one fish. I grew up fishing for these off of the South Florida piers, and nothing got me as excited as they did. They follow other sea creatures, such as giant turtles, big stingrays, or even massive sharks. With the right presentation, they'll inhale a bucktail jig right in front of you. And they grow to over 100 pounds. I've heard them called by many names. Lemonfish, Ling, but most people know them as Cobia. And I'm not happy about this, but it's been three or four years since I've had the chance to sight fish one. So you guys know, I'm fired up for today's adventure. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another video. Everyone's all bundled up. Vic is hiding behind all those clothes. When do you ever see us wearing beanies in Florida? <laughs> and we are out with Captain Tanner today. How you doing, guys? What we're catching today? Well, we're gonna head down south and go look for some cobia. Dude, you know that's like my favorite fish. It's, it's, actually... favorite, it's one of my favorite fish too to catch. They're awesome. You will see me geek like you've never seen me geek before. <laughs> I'll just start freaking out. I'll probably start like, you know, I'll try and tie something on and I'll just mess it up. Like, <laughs> I have a feeling Brooke is gonna catch the biggest fish of the day today. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Let's go. <hope. laughs> just ran out that was freezing riding out here right now I think it was like 32 33 degrees this morning it's probably in like the 40s right now but us Florida people we were freezing on that run out here Tanner is now marking this area trying to find some bait he's gonna throw the cast net that's how you know he's a good captain on a cold day like today he is willing to throw the net but hopefully we find some live bait that's gonna make catching these monsters a little bit easier All these size coats. All right, coats are over the top. Are these coats? Are these baby mutton, yeah. I think, or is this a lane? Yeah, it's a lane. No lane. All right, that's a cobia bait if I ever seen one. Uh, that would make a stellar bait. But we gotta uh, let that guy go. Let him go. Sure they do. I've never used them. Sure they'll so that. no pilchards, but we got a mixture of a couple live baits and we also got a decent amount of lures with us today. We're going to send it out to the area where Tanner's been finding cobia and other offshore reef fish and there should be other stuff for us to catch bait out there if we need it. I'm going to snooze in the bead bag chair because I got about zero sleep last night, so I'll see you guys out there. I don't know what we hooked on the SPJ, but we hooked something. What do we got? Come on up, buddy. Oh, we got us a wonderful blue runner on the SPJ, Johnny Jigs 160 Flatty. These things are candy. Great baits, especially this size. Oh yeah, buddy, welcome aboard Real Deal Fishing Charters. Come on. Oh, take this little runner, pop him in the well. So we just pulled by this shrimp boat, the Julianne. There's a bunch of birds in the air. And at night, these shrimp boats go out and troll all their lines, catch everything that they're gonna catch throughout the night. And during the day, they sort their catch, throw out all the bycatch. So the bycatch creates this giant chum slick for potentially some cobia and other fish to come up in. So we came up here just to kind of see if anything was going on. Don't see much of anything, so we're gonna hit it and go to the next spot. Okay, so I am going to drop this custom-made cobia jig. I've had this thing for, I don't know, 
six, seven years now. I used to buy these for when we cobia fish off of the pier, sight fishing cobia. And these are custom made, made by hand, custom paint jobs, custom molded heads, bucktail feathers, everything. They, the guys went absolutely crazy with these things when they were making them, but they definitely worked. Caught a lot of cobia on them off the piers back in the day. And I think it'll work just fine today. I'm gonna take this guy, fan cast the area, bounce it on the bottom, jig it hard, jig it fast. Just see if we can raise some fish, get some fish around the boat. I'd love to sight fish one of these monsters. Okay. Yeah, it is. We got us a shark. Shark smoked that jig. What kind of shark is it? I don't know, he's all yellow. There's so many different species of shark, man. I can't keep up. That's the yellow one. <laughs> Honestly, it looks almost... Nah, it's not baby lemon. Nah, he doesn't have the second dorsal. He has the coloration of a lemon, but no dorsal. I just want to get the jig back. Well, I'm going to let him calm down a little bit more. I'm not trying to have him freak out. Especially after... Did you see that video of the dude trying to unhook the shark and twisted his pinky off, yeah, dude? Oh, no. Whatever type of species that shark is, comment down below, man. I, I can't keep up. There's so many different species. He smoked the jig. We're gonna let this guy go. Let him back out in the water. There we go. I don't know, dude. Oh, well, I got something good too. Oh man, we are on, we are on. It's a heavier fish. Definitely a heavier fish. Come on up, buddy. Come on up. Oh man, what is this? Come on up. Yeah? Yeah? I don't know what we got. Could just be some balance too. Oh no! It feels like a fish! Oh, he's coming to the surface now. He's coming to the surface now. What do we got, man? That's the right kind. Yeah, it's a cobia. That's the right kind. Oh, God. Woo! Oh, that's cobia. Oh, man, that's cobia. Well, that was quick. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let, let a little drag out. You know, that's the first cobia I caught in a long time, man. In a long time. I'm gonna spin them around so you guys can pull them. Ryan, do you want me to use your camera? Yes, please. Is this the black one? And the black one. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, there he He's goes. not done yet. <laughs> Keep him tight. A jig right through the top of the mouth. Custom made jig. I haven't used this jig in probably five, six years. I used to cobia fish off the piers all the time, fam, but they just stopped showing up. Let's go! Y'all, that is one of my favorite fish. Honestly, it really is my favorite fish. Oh man, that's sick. That's, that's a nice awesome. fish, brother. Yeah. That's a nice fish. Real deal charters, Captain Tanner Ison. There he goes. I gotcha, I gotcha. One of that's my favorite fish, y'all. These things are just sick. They munch the jig. Typically, you're able to sight fish them, but I was able to jig this bad boy up. 
gorgeous fish, man. So fun, so sick on the custom jig. Awesome. First got to be 36 inches to the fork. So that is what are we looking like? Yeah, that's 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 37, 38 inches. There's one fish that when I was in high school, really getting into fishing for myself, that like kept me up at night, got me excited. It was this fish right here, sight fishing these guys off the piers, and they really don't swim by the piers too much anymore like they used to, but. Being able to come out here and catch one for the first time in a couple years, man, is awesome. Especially on a jig, on a spinning rod is my favorite way to catch them. Gorgeous fish, delicious, super stoked to get this one. And uh, this is measured out at 38 inches. They have to be 36 to the fork now, and you're actually only allowed to keep two per boat now. So this one's going in the cooler, and we gotta catch one that's quite a bit bigger than this to end the day out. Pulling up to this thing, it is covered up in barracudas, blue runners, we've seen bull sharks, we've seen amberjacks, just a ton of life out here. Looking for that first cobia, Tanner said sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to pop up. So we're gonna take our time, fish around it a little bit, see what we can catch, and then hopefully we find that big brown. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just got assaulted by a grape. Then hopefully we find that target species. I got whacked too. I was on the bottom, got whacked. He just hooked up too. Did he? That's him. There you go. Keep it tight. You getting hit? Oh yeah. By junk. That's very shark-like. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Come on up, buddy. Come on up. Some jack like maybe? Come on up, buddy. Ooh. Pulling. Ooh. Ooh, that's an angry fish. That's an angry fish, buddy. That is oh man. Just got sharks or something, man. I might have hooked a shark. Definitely feels like it. It's all chafed up and rough. There goes that jig. Okay, we are pulling up to the tower right now. Seeing if we can just see one pop up or something like that, getting a little close to it. Gonna try not to get pooped on because this thing is covered up in seagulls and birds and stuff like that. But the fish should be hanging around. Just, you know, they, they might just like circle it like they do in other areas with structure. I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled. Hopefully we can sight fish one on camera for you guys. I don't know what that was. <laughs> no! No king! Well, we got us something at the NLBN. Jack on the five inch NLBN. Smoked it. Let them go, let them grow. So these giant towers are very far offshore, 50, 60. There's even towers up to a hundred miles out. They used to be used by the Air Force for communications. They're acted as like a relay tower allowing the Air Force to communicate a lot more effectively. They haven't been in service for decades, but they still are out here and they house a bunch of different reef life. The structure, you know, in the middle of the ocean just 
kind of provides like a safe haven for a lot of fish, a lot of bait, basically a giant ecosystem out here in the middle of the ocean. So we pulled up to this thing and there was just kudas and amberjacks and we hooked a bunch of sharks, but we didn't see that cobia at first. We decided to pull up a little bit closer to it, get like right up on it and just see if we could see anything because Tanner said sometimes the cobia will just be circling it. And sure enough, Tanner pointed one out to me. I cast it over to it and immediately this thing inhaled my lure. Yeah, Oh, you got? Oh, you got? Oh, you Saw that fish. Oh, there's a fish right here. Oh, it's a kuda. Never mind. Man, saw that fish swimming on the corner of the tower. Tanner pointed him out to me. Pitched out the swim bait in front of him. And he smoked it, man. He smoked it. Ooh, man. Oh, God. Strong fish, buddy. Strong fish. I think you should net him. Okay. <laughs> you think we're gonna get a bigger one? I I don't think that's a guarantee, but sure, dude. You just let me know when you want me to yeah. You let me know when you get the shots you need. Yeah. This is sick. Angry. Angry fish, man. Hell yeah, Tanner. <laughs> this is the first day that I've netted two solid Covio. Let's go, brother. That was sick. That's a nice one, dude. Definitely a keeper. Oh, definitely keeper. That one's probably a 39, 40 incher, I think. I think he's a hair bigger than the last one. Yeah. Dude, that's ridiculous, man. He nailed that thing. Dude, it's like, no you're like, oh, there's one right there. I was like, okay. <laughs> Get it right in front of his face. Come He'll on, smoke man. it, dude. There you go. Let's go, brother. Nice. <laughs> Vic hooked up. Tanner said, dude, there's a right there. Right there. Ready for that? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Let's go, brother. There you go. Nice Captain job. Tanner, you on. Captain Tanner, real deal charters. And they got sandpaper mouths. You see this right here. This is literally like, I don't know, 2040 grit. Real sandpaper, like no teeth, but they're able to grab things, crush it. Yeah, they hurt your hands too, dude. They're strong. Just a stud of a fish. Sight fished him off the edge of this communications tower. Tanner pointed him out to me. Pitched out the swim bait, the NLBN, and he just absolutely smoked it. Awesome fish. Probably, I don't know, 40 inches to the fourth, bigger than the one that we caught earlier. And then Victor was able to catch one right after, getting doubles. Just, just an absolute stud. It's so much darn fun to catch. So, we're gonna put this guy in the ice box, but I am going to stick this knife in his gills and I'm gonna bleed him out. That is going to improve the quality of the meat overall. They are slimy things, but we're just doing it in the ice box just to keep everything nice and clean, nice and organized. Get a grip here. I'm gonna go in right underneath the gills. Get this membrane. And he's just gonna, the blood is gonna start coming out. I'll allow that to drain a little bit. So this is trip number three with Tanner. First one, which one was the first one? Do you remember? First one was the African Pompano. Yeah, th so those my biggest African, my first African Pompano, then my biggest African Pompano. And you catch those every once in a while, yeah, right? Yeah. And we caught 
the, probably the most ridiculous red grouper bite of my life too. We caught, I don't know, dozens of red grouper. We left them chewing and you have that a lot of the time of the oh, year, yeah. right? Year and, round. And then the second trip, what was that that we did? We ran out and caught the mangroves. Oh yeah, yeah, we caught the mangroves and then we went offshore and we sight fish permit offshore with live crabs. That was absolutely sick. We like pulled up to these spots and there was just like 30 permit on top and we were able to pitch out crabs in front of them. Now trip number three, got to, got to land two keeper cobia. So, I mean, dude, you got one heck of a fishery out yeah, here, dude. Yeah. It's sick and you, you know, you do stuff like this all year round, right? Pretty much, yep. Yeah, so man, if you guys want to do a trip like this, if you're into jigging, if you're into live bait, Tanner's got trips for you guys out of Marco Island, Florida. I'll have all this stuff linked below. It's real deal fishing charters, right? Yep. Awesome, well thanks brother, I appreciate it man. Absolutely. We will see you guys at the fillet table. So I have filleted a handful of cobia in my day. I used to catch these a lot back when maybe I was better at fishing, I don't, I don't really know. I was telling you guys I used to fish for them all the time when I was a kid off the piers and stuff and there just really aren't as many around inshore easily accessible to me as there used to be. So this is a treat for me to get to do this. Been a while. I will say, cobia have some smelly freaking guts. So typically, a good, it's a good idea to gut them out and maybe even take the head off when you're filleting these guys. The meat is delicious. It's just a little bit of a slimy fish. It's not the easiest to fillet in the world, but I feel super lucky to be able to get to harvest this fish and eat it. Let's clean them up and then we'll see you guys in the kitchen. I invited my wonderful girlfriend Christina over for dinner. She is behind the camera right now and she's super excited to eat some of this cobia. So just got a couple pieces for us right now. I dropped off a couple pieces to my parents, gave a couple more away because I'm a big fan of that. I like eating fish fresh and I like sharing it with people when it's fresh because that's really when it's the best. So I, I typically really don't even freeze that much fish. The very first thing we're gonna do is we got a bunch of fresh mango in the blender right now. We're gonna add some lemon juice and a little bit of chili powder. So we got about a quarter of a head of garlic that I just crushed up. I'm gonna add some olive oil, saucepan a little bit. We're gonna go in with some Italian seasoning. Little bit of salt and some cracked pepper. Come over here to our zucchini squash. We have that just laid out on a wire rack because as these bake, they are going to release some water. And when I've done this in the past and just left them on the tin foil. They just kind of get soggy and I want these to crisp up a little bit. So we're just gonna keep adding on our garlic olive oil mixture. Now they got olive oil and everything on all the zucchini, we are going to add some Parmesan cheese on top of them, all right? We got the oven preheated to 350. All of these guys covered in some wonderful Parmesan cheese and we are going in. Season our fish, we're gonna go with black pepper, garlic powder, some salt, some chili powder, and some paprika. This thing going higher after this. We're going in a hot pan. We got some peanut oil in there, and we're gonna lay these seasoned side down. Delicious. 
So we had the zucchini in for about 12 minutes at 350 baked, and then I turned the broiler on for the last four. And that crisped up the cheese to this beautiful little golden brown. Now I'm just gonna garnish them with just a little bit of shredded parsley, and they're gonna be ready to serve. So we're gonna come in with some of our mango puree. These, some like, I don't know, something like that. Something like that. Make it look good. James, if you're watching, we need help. Oh, that looks great. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna quote, you can do your plate, I'm going to do mine. I messed up. Oh, so it's clearly not that easy, huh, peanut calorie? I'm just putting a little bit yeah. and then I'm gonna take some of these zucchinis and just. Ooh, look at that plating. Just. Oh, wow, look at that form. White. What'd you say? <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> but I thought this was gonna look a lot better than I. Your creation didn't pan out the way you wanted it to be. I'm learning. This is a work in progress. <laughs> Come in with some rice right on top of our mango puree. Another nice piece of cobia, right there on top of the bed of rice. That looks lame. What are you talking about? That does not look as good as mine. Mine looks phenomenal. You're crazy. You wouldn't know art if it jumped up and bitched on the- Ask what in the comments mm -hmm. whose plate looks better, Christina's or Ryan's? Christina's slum plate or Ryan's delicious plate? No, yours just looks like you just threw everything on there. Mine looks like a work of art. <laughs> No, there's art involved. Well, that is one clean plate, two clean plate. What did you think? I thought it was great. Yeah. I've never had Cobia before, but you did an excellent job. And you're yeah. the best cook ever. I wouldn't go that far. I would say I am a serviceable cook, and that's about it. It was so much fun to get out and sight fish Cobia. It has probably been, I don't know, five years since I've caught one, especially on like a spinning rod, on a lure, being able to physically see it eat my jig was just absolutely phenomenal. Huge, huge shout out to Captain Tanner. Check out Real Deal Fish and Charters. It's down in the description. He will put you on some fish. He will put you on some amazing fish. And he caters to anglers of all skill levels. So definitely, if you're in Marco Island, look him up. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys are interested in some absolutely phenomenal land-based fishing, I need you to do me a favor. Check out this video right here, and I will see you over there.